Hello, and welcome back to Hand of Fate. Can you muster the strength to go on? Make your choices. So, the last episode, I forgot to record my microphone, because I'm an idiot. And then I tried to record the next episode, and my recording software crashed. Not once, not twice, but a multitude of times. And I'm now testing to see if it works. If it did work, this will be on YouTube. If not, you'll never see the live day. Ah, <sighs> well... There's little scales. left for us. Face the Jack of Scales and be vanquished. So, I uh, did a multitude of things, including advancing certain storylines and whatnot, unlocking new tokens, stuff like that. I beat the Jack of Scales twice now, and uh, was uh, the second time was actually pretty difficult. Almost ran out of food, but you'll never get to see that because the recording software sucked. Uh, yeah, we, we met a vampire. We got really salty. Um, yeah, we had a blood suck from a vampire. All sorts of different things. But, oh well, live and let die and all that gobbledygook. Uh, okay. Let's put in ambush again and treasure chest, and we'll put in uh, the altar. And I put Strange in the Shadows in again. That was uh, a vampire who sucks your blood for gold, basically. Um, I'll keep them in there and carry on. So it will be slightly different now that we're going back to it because we've technically unlocked the scepter or whatever it's called for beating the Jack of Scales, um, which means we get extra equipment. Do you equipment. understand what it is we do now? Or did I rush you through the rules, pushing you into the play before you were prepared? Such as new equipment and uh, new bonuses, like we start with an additional piece of equipment, which for us this time is the Hitter's Ring, so there you go. Um, Noble Trader, okay, Twisted Canyon stuff. An expedition, press on. We used to start with gold and additional food, which is pretty good. The cities hold no darkness like that to be found in the wilderness on a still and moonless night. So he wants to suck up blood for gold, basically. Uh, he moves with unnatural speed to grasp and bites us. Gives us 12 gold and he wants to shoot again. Accepted. And we got 12 more gold. And let's do it again. Why not? A choice. Select your desire. So, I'm pretty sure that uh, the first time round you can do it twice and then he'll give you the token. But uh, now it's it just seems you can do it infinitely. To earn money, well, or until you die, I suppose. Let's try and get us a weapon without dying or taking damage. Of course, fall down there, take a damage card, lose 15 health. Oh, isn't that fun? And lose 5 more health. Great. Well, we got Frostfang which is a tiny bit better. So we'll take it. Noble in mind, or simply noble by birth. I will happily wager on the outcome. I do not think you have what it takes. A nobleman approaches on a chariot as you walk the streets of Steagall. He notices you and comes to a stop. 
Greetings, mercenary. I'm a collector of rare, we rare weapons, and yours intrigues me. Would you part with it for gold? You know what? It's just a frost fang, so yeah, why not? Splendid. I've never seen one of these. This card's token is now yours. Enjoy your newfound wealth. The nobleman rides away. The dealer draws you five gold gain cards. Wow. That's the most gold I've ever had in this. That is pretty ridiculous. Hopefully we'll be able to pay for multiple things like the landlord. Work your way now. through the woods and see what lies beyond. Think about the way we play this game. You continue to die, yet we reset the board each time. One has to wonder how it is possible to truly lose. Uh, ah, you can't buy anything from here. Don't need to heal. Wow. Uh, wow, that's way too much. Food. Let's buy food. Why not? Uh, we'll stay at 30 food for now. That should be good. Uh, I can't see us needing any more. Tracks in town. Okay. So, this is one of the ones that we sort of advanced. We advanced it by one, and, uh, well. You're traveling through a quiet hammer. At first, its rural aspect appears quaintly serene, but as you near the central square, you realize the lack of activity is due to disaster. A scene of great destruction reveals itself, and you wonder what army of or force of nature besieged this place. You spot one villager retrieving their belongings from the pile of rubble that used to be their home. You call out to them. The villager's head snaps round in a frightened woodland cre like a what, frightened woodland creature. Are you quite mad? Such noise will only tempt the beast to return. Can you not see that we've suffered enough? Upon further quieter inquiry, the villager tells you that the ghostly pale beast smashed through t the town a few days before. It destroyed or devoured everything in its path before heading east out of town. May the gods have mercy on any who cross its path. You cannot tell whether this is warning or a prayer. So now we have to go to the next place. It is easy to follow the trail of carnage from town into the woods. However, once there it becomes much more difficult. Many animals and beasts travel the here, and their tracks crossed and confused. The gigantic beast leaves tracks that are easy enough to follow. Now we have to f go to the, I think the last one maybe? So, this is the furthest I got with it, and then I failed this deck, uh, this chance. So, I'll probably fail it again here. The smell hits you like a hammer blow, twisting your stomach in, into knots. You follow the tracks to a lair or den of some kind. This is where it feeds. Blood stains the broken ground where it mangles its prey. You wait in the shadows where you both hope for and dread its return. Did it, boys? You feel the ground tremble before any sound reaches your ears. Then you hear the forest giving way to the unimaginable force that is approaching. Moments later, the white minotaur's gargantuan form explodes into view, clenching tonight's meal in its jaws. You ready your weapon for the fight, but before you can react, a musket blast, ring blast rings out from another hiding spot, narrowly missing the creature. Behind its eyes, you watch the minotaur consider whether to fight or flee. The huntsman reveals himself, and the great beast roars, then turns tail with the huntsman in close pursuit. What, there's even more? Ah, oh, I was hoping we'd get to fight it and end this. Tracks at night. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. Ah, so this is the last one, then. You burst from the brush and follow the huntsman as he pursues the white minotaur. 
Night has fallen since you arrived and the chase proceeds at a breakneck pace. It isn't long before you lose sight of both your quarries, but you can still hear them somewhere up ahead. Then clearly the huntsman yells. If you want to share this bounty, then you'll need to pull your finger out. You pick up the pace and head towards the sound of his voice. Oh, come on, come on. Pfft. Yeah, followed that. Yep, knew that was coming. Lost him, obviously. Time to chase disappearing tonight, leaving you alone in the darkness. That is ridiculous. All the world is a game board, and us men and women merely players. I alone do not play. I maintain the rules. You have choices, and I have predestination. Your choices, though, are merely a rediscovery of that which you already know. <sighs> Loan. There's a token in it for you if in you win. In a busy market town, you are approached by a shopkeeper on the verge of losing his store. If you lend me the gold I need to save my store, I will pay you one, repay you one day with interest. Sure, ten gold is nothing right now. He gratefully accepts gold, saying you won't regret this. The card token is now mine. After ten steps, the player draws nice two gold cards. Indeed. Cool. Ah, Dead Man's Gorge. Great. It's the Rat Man. Come on. Two gains. Gain ten health. Practically useless. And one food. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Not really. Traveling to the Might as well. See what he's got. Got enough money anyway. Buy items. Spirit walk. Eh. Feathered eyes. Think of enlightenment. Uh, all weapon attacks are enhanced to power. See, that's pretty good, but I always forget to activate artifacts. How much does he sell? Food. Um, I'm not going to do that yet either. Onwards we go. Oh, I'm gonna get them at all. It's better than trudging along a muddy road. Certainly. I do wonder how much time you spend simply chasing down blind alleys. Quite a lot. As you traverse a particularly tricky trail across a mountain ridge, you notice a dark ravine beneath you. Something glitters in the dim sunlight and reaches the base of the, reach the, base of the cavern. Climb down to take a look. In the gloom of the narrow canyon, you find the old remains of a wooden cart, apparently having fallen down years ago. You find nothing of worth except a chunk of glittering metallic ore. It might not sell for much in its current state, but you perhaps can find someone who can use it. You take it and make your way back up to the path. Okay. I like how you don't have to uh, pick the right choice to get that. A horse is a fine companion. I'm sure you'll leave this one in time. You do not seem to have the temperament for friends, even in the animal kingdom. Okay, so we're getting our loan back. 25 gold. 15 gold. 10 gold. So that's like... Gold we just got. Frivolity is not my forte. 
One day as the dust gathers, you reach a large country town hosting a traveling circus. Strange sights, strange smells confront you. Wandering between tents and stores that were once brightly colored but now fade and stay with dust, peasants and nobles wander, seeming almost dazed. There's something about the place that dulls your senses, and for a while you forget your quest. Okay, come on. Choose from these options. Yep, yeah, that's good. Ah, failure. Black cat darts out and weaves between your legs. Distracted, you take a wrong turn and wander down a dark alley. The mysterious mysteries of the carnival await you. Ah, we still didn't get the token. Genuine unicorn tonic can cure any injury, whether from sword or claw, a man calls. Holding up a bottle, he suddenly slashes your arm with a knife, and as you open your mouth to protest, he flicks the bottle, splashing some of the tonic on you. You start to reach for your weapon, but then stop. The crowd leads in and watches as the wound on your arm closes before your very eyes. Made from genuine unicorns and seven secret ingredients, available here for only one night. The dealer draws you one health gain card. The crowd searches forward to buy this miracle potion and you walk on, smelling of ground up unicorn horn, elvish blood, rat men sweat and several other pungent odours you can't identify. Sometime later you find yourself standing at the edge of the forest, signs the crowd behind you, day is just dawning. Uh, the town was long ago abandoned. Still didn't get the damn token. Alicia in Underworld. Win this and claim my token. So there was a card before this, but obviously didn't record, where we got thrown into a portal to the Underworld trying to save a townsperson. As you attempt to discover more about the bizarre portal you encounter, one name keeps recurring, a mythic, mystic named Alicia. Apparently, her expertise on all aspects of Shadow Realms, interdimensional travel, and Beast of the Void is unparalleled. Maybe she knows of Yami Yuki. References. You track Alicia's caravan. She travels under the guise of a fortune teller. Her appearance doesn't match the whispers about her. She is considerably shorter and has much more of a beard. She audibly clears her throat before speaking to you. Welcome, stranger. She recalls in mock blindness. The dark clouds of fate swirled around you in tempest for a little gold. I can help you see your future through the storm. I'm going to pay. And I'm probably going to fail. Yep, you know what's going on. The mystic exhales and opens her eyes. You detect a hint of disappointment. Today, it's up to you to create the path you search for. I'm going to try it again. Why not? We got it. The mystic's eyes flash wide open. You, your fortune is awash with death and destruction, but there is also hope. You carry fortune's favor with you. How I aid you in your endeavors. To someone with such powerful aura as yours, I could tell of what I know. The price of such information, though, would be high. Just, uh, sadly, I see you have nothing I desire. No, um, powerful magical artifacts. Perhaps you return one, only more forthcoming. What? A jerk. Let's see what they've got. Maybe they've got a powerful artifact or some something. Oh, maybe I if I will that work? Uh don't need that. Don't need that either. Okay, I'm gonna try that. See if it works. Oh no, let's see what food they've got. Uh, ah, screw it, I'm gonna buy some. There. Now let's see. Ah, oh, I hope I don't have to do the chance again. A challenge for you. And a token if you succeed. He turns the mystic's caravan in the hopes of persuading her to share her knowledge. Uh, I'll paralyze her such as such as the one you are carrying. Exchange an artifact with the mystic's information. Yeah, give. You hand over an artifact to the mystic. She appears quite surprised. Oh, okay, then. I guess now I have to tell you all the many things I know about the underworld. Gone is the smooth voice of the mystic. 
replaced now by a much more agricultural accent. Seemingly unsure of her words, the underworld is a strange uh, and mystical place. Look, the mystic, the real one, just pays me to drive the carriage and look after the horses. I just fill in occasionally. The other day she comes over all strange, talking about portals to the underworld as such, and says she's going to investigate. That was two days ago. I'm starting to get a bit worried. Will you go look for her, adventurer? Sure. You venture out into the woods behind the mystic caravan and soon come across another portal like the one at the village sacrifice. As you edge close to the portal, a powerful voice booms out in a delighted cackle. At last, a visitor to my domain. You are dragged into the portal. Of course I am. Oh boy. Last time I went to fight four of these, I think. So now it's double. I was also a lot better equipped then as well. They're like hell rats, it's strange. Come on. Oh, you don't even get much warning for that. You can do it. Can I? Wow, you really don't get much time to dodge that at all. Health does it have? Oh my god. Well, we lost about 60 health from that. That was quite the fight. With the last Hellby slain, the voice rings out once more. You have won for now, but my forces will rise up and take the land above by force. You cannot stop us. Card's token is now mine. We didn't get anything other than the token. Really? Ugh, that is just. Horrible. And a treasure chest. Let's try and get it. Yep, fell. Of course I did. Of course I did. See, if they move like that, and it's a uh, success on top, I can, I can do that. Right open. A choice. Select your desire. Nice. Dramatic heave lot gives and the spoils are yours. Full gang cards. We get chains of rage. Chains for armor. As you will. Uh, restore cooldowns, why not? Uh, are you yeah. sure that's the right approach? 10 gold per blessing, so we get nothing. 15 gold. Healing cap is... Yes, we should take that, because we're at 60 health, or 61 health at the moment. So yes, I'm going to take that. Now we're getting 12 health per card. With a lich. There are so many ways to hang on to just one more moment of life. But at what price? I guess this is a boss. The Lich is an undead, able to hurl deadly balls of magical fire. She can also consume other enemies in order to restore her health. Liches are known in legend as the greatest of the undead. Only the most powerful or most foolhardy of wizards attempt to summon one, and only the most unlucky actually succeed. We play for a token now. In the ruins of an old temple, you feel the presence of something evil and unnatural. You've discovered the Lich, powerful undead monster. I'm going to attack it. You bravely approach the evil undead. 
Oh. I hope there's nothing other than her. Oh no, of course there's more. Four skeletons. Which she can revive, right? Spooky. Too spooky for me. Okay, so she's got the range. Oh, you don't want to be like high uh, air teleports. Ow. Wow, she just, she really does just teleport. Stains the ground beneath your corpse. Wow. And so the game takes another life. Do not worry, though. You may try again. I, too, would rather die than face the Jack of Scales. The Jack of Scales isn't even hard. Twenty-five gold and the lovers. Learning gold to a merchant, you received marketplace. And jump to the rest of the mystic, mystic. We got Greenborough Forest. Well, thank you for watching me fail that. Hopefully, next time we won't encounter the lich so ungeared. I didn't expect it to be so hard, to be honest, teleporting and all that. Um, but I uh, should have been watching my health, I suppose. Oh well. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe. See you next time. Bye.